All right, welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1971-74 uh, card set analysis that we're going to be doing here. Uh, it's a series we're going to do on Thursdays this fall as we prepare for the league next year. Um, Tuesdays, of course, we're doing the analysis of keep, waivers, and retires. Here we're looking at um, the actual cards and what we have here is the 1971 card set. So this is the card set that has the fewest uh, available cards left because it's the first year in the timeline. They're already sorted under the teams and uh, in each of the card sets you'll see that there will have guys designated as keepers, um, players who are currently on the carryover league in a future year and the guys they've put on waivers and then, of course, there are still um, other players, like right here from 1971, who have not been in the league yet. But that's a review for a future time. Uh, what we want to do now is kind of mirror what we're doing on the Tuesday series, where we do the trade carousel. And I'm going to go down this analysis in order, um, beginning with the team of the first pick in the draft, Philadelphia, and see uh, what their carousel looks like. Uh, at this point, just for the 71 year, of course, and we'll have plenty of time to look at all the card boxes, but we're going to start with Philadelphia's 1971. The guys they are putting on waivers for the rest of Major League Baseball is Pat Corrales. He might get a job uh, against right-handed pitching if his defense is good, but probably not as a 181 hitter. And then Ron Stone. Ron might get a job as, a, as an outfielder who's a Three on the corners with a low, uh, as it, with a zero arm, but he does have power and a C stealer. But uh, yeah, he barely make a roster. But those are the guys that they're putting on waivers. Uh, when we turn it over, we're gonna find that we'll see the guys who are designated as keepers are already the first uh, guys on top, and that would be. Um, these four players, and they are Tim McCarver, and this is a very nice card for him. Um, nice batting average here. Don't know what his throwing arm is. He's even a C stealer. He does fine against lefties if you want to make one of your full time catcher. He actually hits a 278 and 474 plate appearances. Did it with the Phillies. Had a little stint. Uh, kind of got traded back and forth in the 70s through a bunch of different teams. I think he's with St. Louis again. He was with Boston for a little bit. But this is a nice little card here for Tim, and I think this might be the card they might take uh, between 71 and 74. You can only take two cards from a timeline, so let's look at the other four. Tony Taylor. Uh, this is an would be a nice everyday player. Look how consistent that is. That's a good batting average too. And he can play second and third. C Steeler, power against lefties. It's about a 278 hitter. 287 hitter. That'd be a nice player. And this is good. This means that right now you could identify these are your two keepers from from this year. But you still have more analysis to do if you find better guys. John Callison. Um, the defense is fantastic. Uh, batting average is kind of low. Does have power. Probably a 237 hitter here. 210. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there's no hits ever in, up there. Yeah, I doubt this this year of Callison will be in there. Probably a different one. And Barry Lursch. Starter 7. Gives up a lot of homers. Decent card here. Maybe like a 380 ERA or something like that. 379. <laughs> 5 and 14, 214 innings. Well, plenty of nice choices for the Phillies in their 1971 box. So that's that's pretty good as the team with the first overall pick and the worst team in baseball. Uh, of course, the first pick in the draft for them is most likely going to be Mike Schmidt in his 74 year. Get him on the roster. All right, the team picking second from the America League was Kansas City. Let's take a look at these guys. They put Ron Swoboda on waivers. They didn't need a corner outfitter anymore. 
And actually, this is going to be a fun card. Someone's going to love this card. Maybe, oh, that on base. Power against lefties. Good defense. That's a fun little Swoboda card. Average is 261. The walks make it look even better, though. I predict this card definitely gets in the league somewhere on waivers. This Jim Harden card is very questionable, though. It's on waivers, and that was generous. And most likely, he should probably be retired. This is pretty bad. So I think he's kind of past his prime a little bit here. But those are the two wavered guys for Kansas City. And now let's look at the four pitchers, or the four players. Marty Patton had a nice year. Did it with Boston last year. This is with Milwaukee. He eventually gets to Kansas City, but not yet. Good year, though. 312 and pitches on the rotation. That's a lot of home runs, though, for a starting pitcher. But very good against righties. That would be a decent card to be their keeper. Dwayne Josephson. As a catcher, that's a kind of a full-time catcher. Look at all the power. Balance card. 245, but that's deceptive. He looks better than that for some reason. The extra base hits make it look better, too. Um, could be this one. Bob Oliver. I don't think this one. Um, hopefully he's got better years in the future. There's not a lot to offer here. He's just a 244 hitter, but it's not a pretty 244. Not as nearly as pretty as Josephson. The power is not that much. And doesn't have walks on his card, so I don't like that one. And Horatio Pena, that's a nice reliever. 357 ERA in 58 innings. So it could be, you know, Patton. Either this Brewer patent or a Kansas City patent in the future for Kansas City. They've got nice options there as the team picking second. Next up is the San Diego Padres. Uh, their farm system starts producing in 1973 and 74 when we, Randy Jones and Dave Winfield arrive. But for now in 71... They, they acquired Alex Johnson that the Angels kind of gave up on. Once Alex Johnson doesn't hit 329 anymore, he hits 260. And that's just not good enough for the Angels. They have a glut of outfielders. So they let him go. His defense is poor. He's only okay against righties. Hits lefties very nicely. I think this card could get into the league as a wavered player. Tony Clonger's wavered card. Oh boy, homers and walks aren't a good combination for a starter six. But it's a 390 ERA. So again, a lot of the 71 players, the the weaker players in the carrier league are generally going to be the year one player. And that's what this is. This would be the first of 71, 2, 3, and 4. And that's because teams will sign these guys because they only have them for one year and they, they can get, get cut at the end of the season. So the Padres, four guys to be kept. A very interesting Canizero card. Look at the walks here. That really makes this a fun card. It's probably a 210 hitter. 208 hitter and 260 at-bats. But it's very fortuitous to have power both ways and to have all these walks on this card. It's a little bit reminiscent of the Jim French card that Oakland used in the World Series, except French had walks in the three column. Kind of a fun card, but... You hope you get you hope there's better than this. Ollie Brown, that's a nice card there. Really hits lefties well. Decent against righties. Percentage is very high against righties, so the stats aren't going to look good. Yeah, 273, but the card looks much better than that because of that percentage over here. But I really like the lefty side. Cito Gaston. He's still a 2-2 two two in center field. That should get into the league just because of his defense. Plenty of power. Uh, 1970 was his miracle year, his all-star year. And from there on out, it doesn't, you know. I mean, for this era, that's a little walks, lots of strikeouts. And uh, at least he had nine triples. <laughs> nine triples between 13 doubles and 17 homers. That's a very weird. There it is, triple 111 there. And Ed Spazio, the third baseman. What a fun card this is, against lefties at least. Love to see that over there. His defense is poor. I mean, this is the Padres. I don't know what they're going to do at this point, you know. 
Uh, and, and frankly, the 71 cards might be the last players picked as they're going to look at what's going on in 73 and 74 when the Dave Winfields and Johnny Grubbs arrive, and Randy Jones and players like that. Picking fourth is the Yankees. That's kind of a shocker. But remember, this is the early 70s Yankees. They were a 500 team anyway. They put on waivers Jake Gibbs, and you can see why. He's now just a left-handed hitting catcher with some power, uh, 218 hitter. And Stick Michael, they put on waivers figuring that nobody else would pick him up. If he was a one or two at short, he'd have more value. He's a three shortstop. He is a switch hitter, but his bat's barely there. He's like a 200 hitter. 224. But the strategy is if they lose Gene Michael, it's not a big deal. And frankly, the Yankees might just get him back anyway in the, during the draft without having to protect him. So these are your protected guys here. And Maddox, the reason they traded for him is for his 1974 card, which we'll see in a separate video. It, it's, he's top 10 in MVP votes in 1974 with the Yankees as a one with a minus three arm in center field. So that card will get into the league, not this one. Roy White's still doing it with the power switch hitting ability and tons of on base. Beast stealer now. Never was a good, had a good arm, but that's a nice 292 card, 19 bombs. That's This card should get in the league. I would take this white card. I doubt he'll be better than that. All right, Fritz Peterson uh, is not on Cleveland yet. He's still with the Yankees with 274 innings in 71. That trade to the Indians will come up in the future. But the Yankees might want to take this card as his farewell. And Lindy McDaniel, not this one. This was a bad year for Lindy. We expect his ERA to be around 220-something. Clearly, he didn't have it in 1971 for the Yankees, so it'll have to be a different year for him. All right, next up, the team picking fifth of the Expos in the American League. Relocated there. If you're wondering why, you know, a long time ago, I moved them to Burlington, Vermont, just for kind of a fun, novel thing to do. Because I was in Burlington, Vermont, and went to Montreal on a trip, so <laughs> that's why I did it, did it. But also, uh, they there was no room in either East. In the National League East, we had Atlanta, Florida, the Mets, and the Phillies. In the American League East, we had Baltimore, New York, Boston, and Toronto. So I had to move them, and I, I, I put them in the north of the American League with Detroit. And Detroit borders Canada, not Montreal, but you get the idea. Anyway, the guys they would put on waivers are Bobby Wine. See, this shortstop as a two would get, would get taken before Gene Michael. He actually can hit lefties. About a 250 average over there. Probably with an adding average of like 211 or something like that. 200. That's a nice... That's not a bad 200 when you can figure out he's a two shortstop and he hits lefties decently. John Morris this is a nice lefty who gets lefties out. This, this card's definitely getting in the league. I'm surprised they didn't want to hang on to him. Well, that's a good sign. That means they must have guys better than John Morris. And they do. Bob Bailey. Oh, he'll play through the Expos through most of the 70s. Had a magnificent 1970 year. This year's still good, though. His average is down 251, and the homers are down, but it's still a fun player. Here's a catcher, John Bateman. Power both ways. You like to see that out of a catcher. You hope as a two catcher, they also give him a good throwing. I don't know what his arm will be. We'll have to look at the stats uh, in the spreadsheet to find out what arm they gave him. That's, that's good numbers for an everyday catcher, really, for this era. 492 at-bats, a 242 he had to 10 homers. That's not bad. They, they traded for Kenny Singleton, but they're going to probably do his best year in Montreal, which was 73. That's the year Singleton I think they're going to sign up for. But this Rusty Stubb might be the card they, they take, because I think this is his last year in Montreal before he gets traded to the Mets. So I think that uh, the Expos have no interest in trading him to the Mets quite yet. 
So yeah, this is the card. Boy, that's magnificent, isn't it? This is the card they'll probably make one of their keepers. All right. Next up is the sixth team drafting, which is the Chicago Cubs. In a tough situation, because they're in a division with the Reds and the Pirates. And that, of course, didn't happen in this timeline. They Reds used to be the National League West. But it's really making things difficult for teams like the Cubs and Cardinals because it's so hard to win that division when you have two you know, World Series teams from this era. So Ernie Banks, uh, as, a, as a courtesy, made waivers because the card exists in just 83 at-bats. But he'll most likely be retired. I, uh, no one's going to claim him with this card. But at least he's enforced into retirement. Popovich, this would be a nice, this would be a guy who would be picked up off of waivers. A two at second base can play all infield positions. A switch hitter with power both ways again. Seen a lot of this. Power both ways for an era where hitting was down in general and batting averages down, as you can see. But still having power both ways can make up for that. The four keepers. Kessinger, this is a great get for the for the Cubs in that it doesn't matter which year you pick. He's going to be a steady two shortstops, and his batting average is going to be the same for all four years in, in the in the timeline, around 270, 260, 258 in this case. So whichever year you pick isn't going to matter too much, which gives the Cubs flexibility in the other guys you want to go after. This Jim Hickman might be the one they do go after in 71, because I think his career starts to ebb after this. Still has a nice card here. About 17 homers, 19 homers, and 383 at-bats, plus the 50 walks. Under 400 at-bats is a good number there. I think this, this might be the 71 card they take. Now, as good as this Billy Williams card is, they're not going to take it, because in 72, Billy Williams has an MVP caliber year, hitting like 330 or something like that with 35 home runs. Uh, you could wait. I don't see the point in waiting. I mean, this is a nice card, 301.28, but if you have the ability to hit 35 homers and 330, you take it, I would guess, and not just and have it for two years instead of one year. And those are the only keepers, just three keepers for the Cubs from this particular year. Your keepers may not necessarily be four guys in year one, because you might be keeping a guy who you prefer in years 72, 73, or 74, who just didn't play baseball in 71. Maybe you, he got hurt, for instance. So I don't know who their fourth keeper is. All right, Team 7 is Seattle, expansion team. So this could be a kooky analysis. So <laughs> who are they going to put on waivers is, is interesting. Well, look at this. Joe Foy, interesting. He won a World Series for the Mets last year. Traded to Seattle. Did an okay year. But look at the on base. Oh, he's not. His stealing is down. He used to be an ace stealer. Versatile in the infield. On base against righties. This is a fun card. This will get into the league. Someone's going to enjoy picking this guy up on waivers. Jim Price uh, had a surprise year as an all star. As a backup catcher, he was Bill Freehand's backup in Detroit. But this card and just 54 at bats. Oh, it doesn't have power against lefties as a right hander. That's not good. This is just going to be tricky. I don't know if he'll make it. This is not good enough. Now they're keepers. Diego Seguilla, starter six. 314 year eight, 146 innings. I believe Seattle's got pretty good starting pitching. That's the relief pitching they need. If you, he's might be more valuable in the bullpen anyway, as a righty who gets lefties out. That'd be the trick there. And Luke Walker, same thing, as a lefty. He does okay against righties, and he's just okay here. Similar stats to Sigi. And that's all they have. So it's, you know... If they don't like Sigi and Walker options, <laughs> they might change their mind on Joe Foy and say, you know what, let's let's keep him and wave Sigi or Walker. 
And that's the Seattle squad. Texas. No, not Texas. Portland. Another expansion team. Drafting eighth. Let's take a look at Portland here. And they're putting on waivers Marcelino Lopez. As a courtesy, he's not going to make it. That's just too many walks to be effective, even as a left-hander. I know we've had some bad left-handed pitchers in the league, but this would be an unprecedentedly bad left-handed pitcher. 463 ERA looks a lot better than the amount of on base on his card. The good news is you don't see home runs here. So in a weird strategy, you'd be a left-hander you want against righties. Which has value, but it only has value if your bullpen actually has a second left-hander in it to get lefties out. So that's how you have to play this. Again, there's a shortage of left-handed pitching because they have 32 teams in the league. So I'm not going to eliminate this card, even though clearly this is a inferior to all the other pitchers we've seen. And Claude Raymond, we don't have to worry about this because he's a right-hander. So his value is much worse and the performance is much worse. So there's no value for this even with an ERA below five, you keep expecting to see it turn it over and see an ERA of like six or five and a half. But uh, yeah, that's not good enough. I doubt seriously this card gets in the league, but maybe Lopez does. I don't think Ramon would. Your Portland keepers. They traded for Rich Reese a few years ago to get that three twenty nine hitting card of sixty nine. 70 but that's over with now um but he can still pick it at first base a left-handed defensive first baseman with power against righties and some home runs here not in a platoon which is good i mean if you get another first baseman who crushes lefties who can't field and they exist that'd be a good platoon yeah the 219 batting average but the good news is 24 percent over here forget about that and enjoy the home runs and the defense and the sea stealing. Tony Gonzalez hit 300 and his batting average has dropped to about 270, 245. That's not very good, is it? And the defense is bad. And he has no power. Don't know why you want to keep this guy unless he, he must have a better year in the future. They traded for Bernie Carbo. Good news is uh, he's got better options than this, and this one's not a bad option. Always a guy who could draw walks. Always had a great throwing arm. An East Steeler is very strange. Um, was with the Reds in 71. Clearly had a lousy year, so I don't think it'll be this year. And Jim Perry, another guy they acquired from the Twins, is a 20-game winner. You know, Portland getting a 20-game winner was pretty amazing. Here he's got an area of 423, but he does pitch on three days rest. This is the uh, floor for Jim Perry. So you take this if you can't find anything better, but this is the floor. Because I, I think he's got a good year in 74 when he teamed up with his brother in Cleveland. All right, that's 8N. Let me pause a moment here, and then we'll get you through 9 through 16. All right, we're going to continue with the 9th through 16th teams drafting. Baltimore, a shocking high draft position because of the way they faded horribly in this season. Um, the guys they would waive were acquired in trades. Roy Foster, part of the Frank Robinson trade. Boy, he's going on waivers with a ton of home runs. So he's going to be a fun pick. Look at that, 18 home runs and 400 at-bats. It'll be a nice little pickup for somebody. Gail Hopkins, kind of a first baseman with a chai Sox. He could still hit. That's a nice platoon player. More Probably a DH would be better suited for him. Baltimore's leaving two very good players on the waiver uh, wire. So hopefully they've got really good guys that they're keeping. They do. And that they got Paul Blair. This has got to be a mistake. I don't recall Paul Blair being a switch hitter. That's one of those kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, those baseball cards that are not printed properly and they're worth a lot of money. So, they 
Uh, Blair's got a better year than this, too. 262, 10 home runs. I think he hits 281 and 74. But that switch hitting is unsightly there. That's not right. Boog Powell. Yeah, he was this 1970 American League MVP. Had a terrible year in the year I just played. And he comes back in 71. It's 256 with 22 home runs. Does have a lot of walks, though. And as a two first baseman with all those walks and power, you could take this pal card. It's definitely uh, one of the four years to consider for him. Brooks Robinson, in this period of 71 to 74, he has a power year. This is the power year with 20 home runs. He also has a good batting average in 74. It's 288. So it depends on what you want. Do you want, you're going to get the gold glove. Do you want this power here? That's a lot of home runs. For right hand and the walks. I kind of like that he hits righties better than lefties. You know? Uh, you get more righties on the schedule anyway. And Jim Palmer. Um, you know, as a Cy Young winner, he should have a great card every year. This card against lefties, I don't like the walks there. That's weird. I never knew Palmer to have bad control. Dominates against righties. Oh, what do the stats say? 268. But the walk strikeout ratio is okay at best, right? 20 game winner. I don't know. I don't think. I do not like those walks on 6 and 7. Not for Jim Palmer. <laughs> uh, yeah. You want something amazing out of Palmer, and that's not amazing at all. That's Pat Dobson esque. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Pat Dobson also won 20 games that year, but yeah, Jim Palmer's in the Hall of Fame. So, all right, next guy, next team is Florida. Drafting 10th. Drafting behind Baltimore. Is that crazy? The story of overachieving and underachieving. These, these guys overachieved. They're waving Chico Simone. Probably not enough juice on this card. Yeah, it's got the home runs, but just not enough. And they waved Wade Blazing game. A starter seven lefty that will probably be picked up by somebody, even with a bad ERA. Uh, guy's a starter seven uh, for that reason. He's a starter seven, and it's horrible. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Not Horrible. I hear you're not horrible. Why don't you come try out for my team? Because you're not horrible. Um... These are their keepers. They made that trade to get me on. You can get him as a one, I believe. When he goes to the Mets, he's still with the Braves here. I believe he becomes a one with the Mets at second base. And uh, Atlanta did not want to facilitate him going to the Mets as a one second baseman. Could you imagine that pitching staff with Bud Harrelson and Mian as ones at short and second? But um, Atlanta was glad to put him on Florida, figuring that Florida is going to flounder around, no pun intended. 289 for the fish. Um, Marty Martinez, one of the best utility players in this era, who also could hit. He hit 369. It's 258 here, but the, the card looks pretty good. Extra base hits here, and batting average there, plus all the positions. Jose Pagan, good against righties, not against lefties. You don't want this guy to be a full-time player. It's a 241 hitter. Roger Repos, good range and arm to be a right fielder. Hit around 200 a year ago. So the fact he's hitting 199 now is not, it's not that big a deal. But at a certain point, you have to realize that, you know, corner outfield, that's some low production. Of course, walks and homers, if you hit them, could be could be good news for these guys. They're not really going to compete for the division, I don't think. Not as long as the Mets and Braves are bringing back their core. The Phillies are rebuilding, and the Marlins overachieved. And I think reality might bring them down to earth next year. All right, so we continue with... The California Angels. Uh, this is one of the weirdest teams, a, a Jekyll and Hyde team. 
up and down, up and down, up and down. They alternate almost every year. They go to the playoffs, they finish terrible. They go to the playoffs, they finish terrible. They didn't finish quite terrible. They were 18 and 21, but um, they put Larry Howard on waivers. Fun card. The waiver list is looking pretty good thus far, I would say. Most of the time, the waiver list, you're like, ugh. But there's going to be some pickups, guys moving around, uh, beauty in the eye of the beholder, and particularly at catchers. I've seen a lot of nice catchers with sub-245 batting averages who have productive-looking cards. Hal Kings? No, well, maybe not his so much. Sort of has power, sort of has walks, but together it's only looking like a 217, 207, yeah. Uh, Howard better than King there. But they're keepers. Uh, Eddie Fisher. Nice reliever getting lefties out. He's a nice reliever altogether. Probably a 260 year, right? 272. Nice year for Eddie Fisher. Cesar Tovar. Another nice year for him. Nice trade that was. They traded... Heisel to the Twins to get Tovar. Tovar's going to have some nice years in a twin uniform, and the Angels are going to get rewarded for that. Look at the plate appearances. 311. So, I think that card gets in the league. This is the one they pick. Jim Spencer's still going to bring that great glove. Look at the power now. That's a lot of power for him, finally. 18 home runs. That's good for him. He's like a 10-12 homer hitter normally in this era. Um, sure. Sure. That would be, be a nice pair, Tovar and Spencer. And here's a bad year for Bill Singer, not this one. Yeah, 417. We don't want this Bill Singer. Singer's had this string of quality years for me. I get very, very lucky with Bill Singer, and he does great things. Uh, you know, he's, I don't know, I don't think he went to the Hall of Fame, but he'd probably be in my Stratomatic Hall of Fame because he always pitches well. All right, picking 12th is Ohio. Always fun to see these expansion teams, the randomness of guys that they're looking at. Rick Rennick, mm, versatile, but not much there. And Chuck Hinton, ah, that's better. Uh, versatile, power walks, that's not bad at all. 224 hitter with a card that looks pretty good. The percentages, well, 69%. I guess that hurts over there. That's If you move this homer to there, <laughs> you know, uh, and you move some of those walks over there, <laughs> you know, if you can just redraw the card a little bit, you can make the guy a lot better. But, yeah. The keepers, Dave Cash. He's going to have a great year in this timeline. 289. That's the floor. Um you got to get better than that if you can. I think I think there's a 300 hitting Dave Cash card in this timeline they want to get. Elrod Hendricks is going to do the same thing every year. It doesn't really matter. He's going to hit around 240 with about 10 home runs. 250 with nine home runs. So might as well take this one. Doesn't really matter too much. Roberto Pena. Uh, now what's unfortunate is they kept him. Because he was a 316 at short. You now he's not, he's a four. And that's a pretty weak card. As a keeper, this team might not ha have good options for the further keepers. And by the way, just because you have four keepers, during the draft you could change your mind and just pick guys off the street that you think are better. Tom Hall. Uh, one good reason for Ohio to have this guy is that you keep him away uh, from the Twins and also from the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, he would do really well for those teams who are closer to the playoffs. Um, this is a nice card. It gives up a lot of homers, though. Again, that's probably the floor for Tom Hall. You hope to get better with, it, with him. All right. Next up... We have four more teams for tonight, and then we'll be halfway through, and we'll call it. So we're going to go to Team 13 on the clock, and that would be the San Francisco Giants. Another team who really disappointed. Once Juan Marichal became just a normal pitcher, 
<laughs> instead of the greatest pitcher in Strat, which he was for like three years, uh, the Giants kind of suffered. They traded for Jim LaFay and put him on waivers. That's a still a productive card for LaFay. It's a switch hitting second baseman with power. Ken Wright. Brighty who gets righties out, sort of. Hate the walks there. He might get in the league. I'm, more, I'm obviously harsher on right-handed pitching than left-handed pitching when it comes to these mediocre players. All right, I think this is McCovey's last big year in San Francisco with 18 homers and a 277 average. It's not a big year, obviously. Um, and then he'll have a nice year with the Padres in 74. So you might want to just take him for one more year with this card. Dick Dietz still has the homers and walks. Great stats for a catcher. 19 homers, 252. Sam McDowell, no, known, known for homers and walks and Ks. I'd normally be concerned if that was a righty, but as a lefty giving up homers a lefty, it's not that much big of a deal. A lot of lefties don't have power versus lefties. So we could take this card to add them to the rotation next year. 13 and 17 for a Cleveland team. The Giants hope to be better than that. Dom McMahon has a better year closing out games than this one. 406 ERA. No, we can do better than that. So, that's the Giants. Again, you pretty much have to get McCovey, you know, and just maintain McCovey's timeline and the teams he's on. I kind I tend to do that for Hall of Famers, keep them on their trajectory they had most of the time. All right, 14th is Detroit. The Tigers. Went to the World Series last year, and then this year they ran into a buzzsaw in the playoffs. They lost to Milwaukee and the White Sox, like lost eight straight. Uh, Woody Woodward, uh, utility player against righties, not so bad. 242. Ron Hansen traded for him. He had a big card for the that Las Vegas shoes, his 1970 card, but then this is more typical of the time. Uh, and probably, this card doesn't get into the league, I don't think. Not good defense and not a good bat as a waiver, guys. Their keepers. Ah, nice Fred Sherman. They're going to really improve their bullpen. That was their weakness last year because Hiller will be the lefty closer and Sherman will be this slam dunk left. This is nice. Sherman and Hiller will be a nice tandem. The Minnesota Twins use Pete Reichert. And Ron Peronowski very well. If you have two stud left-handed relievers, you can do very well in Strat. And this is a nice Fred Sherman card with the Tigers. And 11-6, 271 ERA. Al Kaline, ages like fine wine. He's probably 35, 36 years old, and this is the card you, you make. Still has fantastic defense at two positions. He's your Hall of Famer. What more do you want? This is amazing for his age at this point. 294, only 15 homers. Look at the card again, and you're like, what? 15 homers? You're kidding me. It's Well, I guess he doesn't have one on six. It's just on five. I guess you see the word home run, and it's a little deceiving. But, yeah, it looks like 16 homers, I'll call it. <laughs> All right. And we have Bill Freehand. And this is a fine card for freehand. I like to see him hitting righties better than lefties. He was a little bit imbalanced in the 70 card. Crushed lefties, but just kind of average against righties. Now he's a full-time catcher. Yeah, 516 at-bats. You could push that. Hey, Stratomatic, what's going on there? He didn't strike out? <laughs> I like seeing these mistakes. It's kind of fun. Um, 277, 21 homers. Where's the injuries? In 12 or 11? It's on 12. Wow. So they treat him like a position player. This means when I see a catcher with injury on 12, I'm treating this like he's a full-time catcher. And all you have to do is find another guy who played catcher for like a couple innings just to have him on the roster in case you get that injury. But otherwise, Freehand's going to play every day with this card. Excellent card for Freehand. Tiger's looking good. And they're going to have the other keeper didn't was uh, John Hiller. 
his 71 card's not here, but he's got a better card in the future. So that's John Hiller. All right. We got a couple more to do. We have color, a couple expansion teams, then we'll call it for tonight. Colorado from the Mountain Time Zone in Arizona. We'll start with Colorado. What do they put on waivers? Paul Ratliff. Nah, that's not going to make it. That's not good enough. Gary Peters. He's a starter seven lefty. He was really good against lefties. If you could convince him to go to the bullpen, he'd be great. Because see all this getting lit up? If you put him in the bullpen, he won't get lit up. He'll be your situational lefty. So I can do that. And I'll take advantage of that in my carryover league. See, you see he's got 214 innings and a 437. But you're, you, you repurpose the guy. And you say, look, dude, I'm going to put you in the bullpen. You're going to have a lot of success there. And you're not going to suffer all this crap. So, yeah. Some team's going to, who needs a lefty in the bullpen will pick him up off of waivers. And a surprising move during the draft. All right, they're keepers. Jack Hyatt, known for on base. Look at all the walks this guy had. He did it for his whole career. 35 walks, 174 at bats, and a 276 batting average. This is like a, almost a 380 on base. That's fantastic. You can turn this into an everyday catcher for an expansion team. That's what these expansion teams do. They find outliers, guys in a limited uh, sample size who you could play every day. This guy is one of them. Don Money, not this year. Uh, in 1974, Don Money's a one at third base. That's probably the year they'll take, not that year. Rick Monday. No, you don't want this one. He's going to be a better... Yeah, he's he should be an everyday player, and you can see he's weak against lefties. And Carl Morton was a rookie of the year in 70, but in 71, he fell apart. So it's a future year for Morton. So Jack Hyatt is really the strength of that Colorado keeper list in 71. And lastly for tonight, well, the team at the midpoint of the draft is Arizona. They're putting on waivers. Paul Casanova, we don't see the arm here, but it's probably going to be between 0 and minus 2. That, depending on what it is, gets him into the league. If he's a minus 2 arm catcher, he gets in the league. It's a zero-arm catcher. He doesn't get in the league, probably. We don't know what that is yet. We'll have to look it up more. Ken Tatum, slowly. Uh, 69, he was great. 70, he was okay. And now in 71, he's really starting to lose it. In 70, he dominated against righties. He's not quite dominating. Uh, he definitely would not be at the back end as a closer, but he could be a setup guy. And your four keepers. They traded for Merv Rettman just for this one year. This is Merv had a great 70 and an even better 71 for Baltimore. Baltimore couldn't fit him. Baltimore had too many outfielders. But for one year, Arizona had this great Rettman card. Then after that, he turns into like a 260, 270 hitter and, and years worse. So this will be the card they take. Ed Herman. Uh, yeah, the platoon catcher with power as a left-hander, maybe. Dalton Jones, utility player. Interesting batting average. Out, out there, like a 256 hitter. 254. And Chris Short. Starter 7. 3 to 5 ERA. Well, Rettman is obviously the star of that class. He could be the first-round pick for this team, depending on what's available in their rookie season of 74. But anyway, that's the first half of this box with teams drafting 1 through 16. And we will resume this series of looking at Stratomatic cards on Thursday nights in the fall as we uh, get into the Hot Stove League for the 71-74 uh, season. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.